I now look to President Mohamed Nasheed to continue the case for the opposition. Good evening, Mr. President. Good evening, honorable members, ladies and gentlemen. It's lovely to be here in Oxford again. The last time I came here was in 2010. Then I was the president of the Maldives. Since then, <coughs> much has happened. Uh, I've been toppled in a coup, sent to jail again, and now again back in England in exile, having been granted political asylum by Her Majesty's government, and thank you, Her Majesty, for that. <laughs> the Oxford Union has very kindly put me up at the Randolph Hotel. I'm glad they choose that hotel rather than the hotel located in the former Oxford jail, <laughs> which would have been too much of a home from home. <laughs> when I was younger, I used to go to school in England. And as a school debating champion of Wiltshire in 1984, I'm confident, I'm very confident that we will wipe the floor with this opposition. You watch this. <laughs> in, any, in any way, the proposition of this debate is mistaken. It suggests that individual apathy is the reason we have not reduced greenhouse gas emissions enough. Or put it another way, only individual engagement and activism can solve the cl climate problem. But I think it's far more complicated than that. We are not going to solve the climate, cli climate, climate crisis by fragmented individual actions. We will not solve it by people switching off the lights, sorting your garbage at home, hugging a tree, <laughs> or for that matter, any activism of this sort. We now have eight garbage bags in our house, and we sort it. We will not solve it because people try and cut their own individual carbon emissions. We will not solve the climate crisis by individual actions. If you think that giving up modern technology and returning to the trees in order to lower your own individual carbon footprint is the way forward, then as a democratically elected politician from the developing country, I can tell you that it's not going to fly. People are not prepared to give up development in order to solve the climate crisis. Very sorry. Nobody, either in the Maldives, India, or anywhere else in the developing world, is willing to suffer in poverty in order to save the environment. It's not going to happen, and no political leader will be elected on such a platform. People in developing countries want to emerge from poverty. And that process will not stop and will go on. The only question, the only question is, are we going to do it by damaging, by destroying the planet in a dirty manner with cumbersome Victorian technology, or are we going to do it in a cleaner manner? The debate motion points to a broader question, a far broader question. Why does change happen? That sometimes change happens because of charismatic leaders. Perhaps you're thinking about Gandhiji and the Quit India movement or Nelson Mandela and the anti-apartheid movement. 
Sometimes change happened because of strong political leadership. We're not thinking about Donald Trump. <laughs> We're thinking about President Kennedy and the race to the moon. Sometimes change happens because of scientific or technological breakthroughs, like accidentally discovering penicillin and saving millions and millions of people. So how does change happen in climate change? On climate change, change happened, and change is happening. The decisions by German politicians, and yes, of course, through pressure from voters, to invest in solar power was the seed money for a perfectly viable renewable energy industry. It's the feed-in tariff system, nothing else, by the Germans that got renewable energy as an industry flourishing. Soon, we found Chinese manufacturers got on board and the price of renewable energy collapsed. That this make the economics more attractive, which made it easier to generate further political will in other countries. So it's, it's the realization that there is, a, it's the realization that it is possible to have the same economic outcomes, high employment, low inflation, general greater GDP growth, but through another development strategy. It's the realization that we can save the planet through a low carbon and a circular economic model that has changed the subject. This realization led to the Paris Accord. Of course, it was a process which was underpinned by better science showing the impacts of climate change. So action, action on climate change has therefore been a wholesome circle with politics unlocking technology, which unlocks the economics, which further unlocks the politics, and so on. The reason why, until recently, the politics on climate change was so difficult was simply because we did not have an alternative to fossil fuels. Even with individual engagements in the world, governments could not move away from fossil fuels without an affordable alternative. At the Copenhagen Climate Summit in 2009, the price of clean energy was simply just too high. Even with massive activist movements calling for a deal, governments couldn't come to a real agreement in Copenhagen. But by the time Paris Accord was signed in 2015, the price of renewables have fallen by 60%. In Copenhagen, we had the moral argument, and just only the moral argument. And therefore, it was difficult to solve it. But when we went to Paris, we had the economics behind us. Since the Paris Accord was signed, we have seen more stunning drops in the price of solar, wind, and batteries. Renewable energy is now cheaper than coal in many countries. Fairly soon, fossil fuels will not be able to compete with renewables in price. Politicians can slow down the process or make it go faster, but they can never, never, no longer stop it. So, despite coming from the most climate vulnerable country, I am optimistic about the future. In 2009, when I was in office, I pledged to make the Maldives carbon neutral. Everyone thought I was mad. Today, we have 47 countries agreeing to go carbon neutral within the next two decades. So, individual apathy is not going to stop the world moving towards fossil fuel. You must vote with us. Individual apathy can remain, but we will go forward, and we will change the planet, and we will save the planet, and it can be saved. The clean technology horse has bolted its table. 
You should join political parties, lobby them to formulate and propagate the complete low carbon development manifesto. So we need collective action, and that's called politics. We can change the world not when we act alone, but when we act together. Thank you.